I'm over Thai. This is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I'm sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 89. Title of the discourse is Shrines to the Teaching. Uh, also known as Dhamma Sethiya Sutta. Dhamma Sethiya Sutta. Link to the discourse is given in the description. Uh, now this discourse, uh, basically the context is that Buddha was staying in the land of the Sakyans and in the Sakyan town of Medulampa. Now King Pasanadi uh, uh, was going somewhere and then he thought that uh, he came across a, a very quiet forest, woods and in the uh, far from the maddening crowd and this uh, reminded him of the Buddha. So he asked his charioteer that where is the Buddha right now? He said that he is in the Sakyan town named Medulampa uh, where the Buddha is uh, staying. So uh, he asked how far it is uh, uh, away. He said it's not that far away. So he said take me to that particular place where Buddha is. And when he reached, King Pasanadi reached that particular town and that place where Buddha was, he saw several mind, uh, mendic mendicants who were walking mindfully in the open air and he asked, where is B Blessed One? He, so the mendicant, one of the mendicants said, he's there in the hut, you can go and check with him. So when he went in the hut and uh, we basically uh, kind of, uh, uh, he bowed with his head at the Buddha's feet, caressing them and covering them with kisses and pronouncing his name, Sir, I am Pasanadi, king of Kosala. I am Pasanadi. So, if you see, uh, this is basically uh, uh, Middle Discourses 89 that we are discussing here. Uh, if you see 88 and 87, 87 was where he was like totally indifferent to Buddha's teaching. But his he, he the view of the Buddha made him you know, change about the loved ones, whether they are source of suffering or not. Again, in, in uh, 88, he moved more towards Buddha's teaching when he learned certain things about Buddha's knowledge from Ananda, Buddha's disciple. Now here in 89, Middle East Coast 89 is next step where he is actually meeting the Buddha and he is expressing his love and reverence because by now he has understood the Buddha, uh, who he is, his fully realized nature and his fully realized teaching. So he says, he was caressing Buddha's feet, covering them with kisses and pronounced his name, Sir, I am Pasanidhi, the king of Kosala. I am Pasanidhi, king of Kosala. So Buddha said, but great king, for what reason do you demonstrate such utmost love for this body, conveying your manifest, manifest love? So again, uh, just l l uh, uh, read out the words. Do you, why do you demonstrate such utmost devotion for this body? That means this body that I have. So Buddha was not at all, you know, feeling proud that, you know, or some feeling good that someone is revering him so much. He's saying, why are you, you know, you know, he was saying about my body, right? Why are you expressing so much? reverence towards my body. So now uh, King Pasanadi says, Sir, I infer from the Buddha, from the uh, from the teaching. A I infer about the Buddha from the teaching. Right? So he must have got in the earlier discourse when uh, Ananda told him about Buddha's teaching and he must have also studied a bit because his wife was a lot of uh, follower of Buddha's teaching. So he says, I infer from the Buddha, from the teaching, the blessed one is a fully awakened Buddha. Teaching is well explained. The Sangha is practicing well. It happens, sir. Then he said, then he gave reasons why, you know, he is having so much love and devotion. He said, I see some ascetics and Brahmins leading the spiritual life only for a limited period, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and then they leave it and then they uh, lose themselves in sensual pleasures. But when I see Buddha's Sangha, I see mendicants leading the spiritual life entirely full and pure as long as they live to their last breath. I don't see any other spiritual life elsewhere so full and pure. Now, See, in even Buddha's Sangha, in the monastic court, there is no such like rules that you have to, you know, live to your last breath in the Sangha. You can disrobe. At any time you feel that you don't want to continue, you can disrobe. But the, the, the thing is that even though there is no mandatory thing that you have to be in the Sangha uh, till your last breath, still there are mendicants who, who continue to be till their last breath practicing in the Sangha as compared to the other uh, ascetics. So that was one reason. Then he said that, uh, kings fight with kings, aristocrat fight with aristocrats, Brahmin fight with Brahmins, householder fight with householders, mother fight with child, brother fight with builder, fi friend fight with friend. But here I see the mendicants in your Sangha, the mendicants living in harmony, appreciating each other without quarreling, blending like milk and water, regarding each other with kindly eyes. Right? So that is one more reason. Then he said, I have walked and walked from monastery to monastery. I have seen some Brahmins who are Ascetics and Brahmins who are thin, pale, right? Hardly a captivating sight. I don't even 
you know, feel a good feeling when looking at them. So when I ask them, what is happening to you? He says, we have joined this. And, and, in, and I see mendicants of the Buddha. In the Buddha Sangha, they are always smiling, joyful, happy with cheerful faces, living relaxed. And they, and he, he says that I, it occurs to me that clearly these venerables, they have, they have uh, got a higher distinction uh, in the Buddha's instructions than they had before. That's why they are joyful and cheerful, happy, living relaxed. Then he says that uh, as an anointed aristocratic king, I am able to execute, fine and banish those who are guilty. But yet when I am sitting in judgment, giving my judgment, they interrupt me and I cannot get to stop. Now, see, basically King Patsanati is here realizing the suffering even for a king's life. Right? So, even a king has these kind of sufferings that when he is pronouncing a judgment or delivering a judgment, they, the these the guilty people, they keep interrupting him. And But he says, when I see the Buddha who is teaching an assembly of so many people, there is not a sound of his disciples coughing or clearing their throats. Right? One of the disciples clears their throats. Other disciples says, hush, venerable, don't make a sound. Our teacher, the blessed one, is teaching. So how disciplined the Sangha operates? Then he says, I see some clever aristocrats who are subtle, accomplished in doctrines of other hair splitters. They live to demolish. So there are people, ascetics, Brahmins, uh, aristocrats and Brahmins, who basically uh, wait for kind of destroying the other the doctrines. But when So they wait before Buddha comes in their city or town. They wait, having prepared their questions, and they are ready to kind of demolish Buddha's convictions. But when Buddha comes, he delivers a fire, he fires them and delivers them with a Dharma talk. They even forget their questions. Instead of refuting, they forget their questions and they seek ordination in uh, in the Buddha's Sangha. So that is the power of the Buddha's knowledge. That is one more reason. Then he talked about his chamberlains, Isadatta and Purana, who basically share his meals and his carriages. And he King gives them livelihood, brings them uh, to limelight, and they don't show me the same level of devotion. Sorry. They don't show me the same level of devotion that that they show to the Buddha. So he said, this example, that he was once, he was living in a cramped house. Uh, he was leading a military campaign. He was residing in a cramped house. And he was spending the night with these two people. And they, uh, Sadatta and Purana, they had their heads towards the Buddha and their feet towards me. He says, they are, these are my chamberlains. I feed them. I give them livelihood. I give them a job. Still, they don't respect me as much as they respect the Buddha. That is one more reason. Then he said, furthermore, he says, the Buddha is an aristocrat and so am I. Because Buddha was an aristocrat, a, a, a Kshatriya, right? A, basically, a, 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 from the warrior family who, who become a monk. So he, and then Buddha is a Kosalan and I'm, so he's establishing that rapport with the Buddha. The Buddha is 80 years old, old and so am I. Uh, since this is so, it's proper for me to show the Buddha the, with utmost devotion and demonstrate such friendship. So then he said, Sir, I must go. I have many duties and much to do. So Buddha said, Go at your convenience. And after the Buddha left, Buddha, a king left, Buddha addressed the mannequins. Um, mannequins, before he got up and left, King Pasanadi spoke shrines to the teaching. Learn these shrines to the teaching. Memorize these shrines to the teaching. Remember these shrines to the teaching. These shrines to the teaching are beneficial and relate to the fundamentals of the spiritual life. For example, the things like he said that mendicants live together harmoniously. They you know, have a discipline in the Sangha. So Buddha said these are the shrines to the teaching. So remember these shrines to the teaching. Right? So this is basically the discourse which where King Pasanadi appreciated Buddha's teaching and the Sangha and how the Buddha's teaching works and, and this is one more opportunity for us as Buddha's students to feel as lay students, lay followers, to feel our uh, fortune, our fortunate, our good fortune to be in this teaching, um, right? And uh, as a one, one more motivation for us to keep practicing the teaching diligently. I hope the video was useful. Do share your thoughts, insights in the comment section. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.